Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee and Dice with Sylvia. I am so happy to be home from Adepticon. I have finally recovered some, and I wanted to just stop in and tell you guys all about the Adepticon event this, this week on Coffee and Dice. So I just, I had a blast while I was there. I met so many wonderful people. It was such a incredible assortment of people there that, and personalities, it was so much fun. If you haven't had a chance to go to Adepticon, I highly recommend that you make the plans for next year. They've already got the venue booked and it's just, it's such a unique environment um, that it, it's a family reunion of people you aren't related to and it's just, I, I can't wait to go back next year. And so I wanna start off by telling Hank and the crew, thank you so much for having me out there and giving me this opportunity. It really has been a blast to work with you guys. Greg Sparks was a great point of contact. He made sure that I had everything that I needed and you know, really took great care of uh, my husband and I while we were there. Dustin, who runs the vendor hall, Oh my gosh, he runs a tight ship. It was great to work with him. He made sure that if I needed access to a vendor before or after the, the vendor hours that that happened and just really made sure that I knew exactly what it was that I needed to do and then made sure that the resources were there for me. So I really appreciate the hard work that all of these individuals do. Paul Long, who runs registration, does a great job running registration. I know a lot of people get rather frustrated with the way the registrations run, but they don't realize how much of a beast it really is. Uh, I mean, you're whenever you're talking about 5,000 plus of attendees and you have a matter of hours to make this happen, it's craziness and he does the best he can to make it an organized chaos. And I think he does a great job of it. So kudos to you, Paul. I've known you for a long time and I've seen you in action at other events, but man, <laughs> there is nothing like it. Nothing like the Adepticon. So you do a great job at, w at what you do. And then Dennis, you do great. It's Dennis Johnson from the prize support, you guys, whenever you go and you, you're you told, hey, go pick up your prizes. And he, you know, he runs that little closet, that room, does a great job. I, I didn't hear anything negative in that regard. So, although we're all getting free stuff. So, you know, the most impressive thing I think I saw at Adepticon though, was the setup, the pack, the swag bag packing and the teardown. The behind the scenes stuff, guys, like you guys see all of this great event and tournaments and, you know, side games and things like that. The setup and teardown is so crazy and so fascinating to watch because you have all of these vendors coming in and this was the largest vendor hall so far. And they just, they packed so many people in and they did such a great job of organizing it. Dustin, you did a great job this year. I'm sure it's not any different than any other year, but I was really impressed with the way that this all went down. So again, if you have a chance to, to go check out Adepticon, the tournaments there are great. Fantasy Flight had a huge tournament there um, with the X-Wing and Star Wars Legion. And then the Song of Fire and Ice was there. They had a big tournament there for that. And of course, the Flames of War and Team Yankee and Bolt Action Tournaments. So those had really good turnouts this year. They had to expand on the Bolt Action Tournament tables this year. So that was really exciting. I loved seeing all of the historical people come out and help support the, the hobby and play in the tournaments. I know that this is a hard thing for a lot of um, gamers to, you know, they, they always want to go to the historical conventions and stuff, but this one is a great way to 
expand on that because you see not only your historical games but also the fantasy and the sci-fi and and things like that the saga games had a room all to themselves and they were going what seemed like non-stop my husband got to play one game the entire time we were there because he was so busy chasing me around helping me and he was actually registered for three different tournaments but only got to play he didn't play in any of the tournaments but did get to play one game of the sagas so I was very thankful that those those rooms were open late so that he at least got a game in while we were there I however didn't really get much gaming in I did get some demos in and I really enjoyed them there was a uh, knuckle dusters that did a great demo for me of their new game system and I look forward to getting my hands on that I had great time talking to the catalyst games guys they um, sent me home with some stuff and we'll talk about that a little bit later but I want to give a huge shout out to the hotel staff there for Adepticon I got to talk to some of the managers and um, the sales representative, the executive chef, and they were just so much fun to talk to. I found out that the original Beer Bite guy was actually the hotel manager um, this year, or this hotel manager. So whenever we first started there at the hotel and convention center, the, he was the original Beer Bite guy. And so it was a lot of fun to chat with him about the, how the convention's grown from an outsider's perspective because he's not a gamer, but he clearly has a great relationship with the staff there. And it was a lot of fun to reminisce with him. And then talking to the executive chef was so much fun. I, he talked to me about how they actually special make the, they customize the menu for the week of Adepticon to help bring in some of the the game systems or the you know different things that we like and so the whole hotel restaurant bar all of it caters to just us gamers and he has a blast with it and then they opened up the new um, bistro uh, pop-up restaurant up there by the bar for open for lunch and dinner and they had a burrito bowl day an Asian day, um, a potato day where they made baked potatoes and put meat and stuff on them. You kind of like a, a potato bar. So good. The food was so good while we were there. I've, I've eaten in quite a few hotels and that definitely ranks up there with some of the best food I've had in a hotel. So great kudos to the hotel staff. Um, just it went so, check-in was smooth, check-out was great. They were so accommodating to us uh, because we were all trying to get out there so quick. Um, just top-notch service, absolutely. So, I wanna talk about some of the different people that I got to meet while I was there other than the hotel staff because I watch, you know, different YouTubers and things like that, but I was introduced to new people and first day, getting off the elevator, hadn't even, you know, barely checked into my hotel. I run into Mel, the terrain tutor. And it was kind of a surreal moment because Mel is a very established YouTuber and he recognized me, not the other way around. I recognized his voice because I hear my husband listening to him, but I had never actually watched his show before. I have now, but it was kind of an unreal moment for me to have somebody else in the industry recognize me that's not a gamer. So that was, that was interesting. So I got to meet Mel. I got to meet Joseph Pendleton from the Miniature Wargaming, the movie. He's the director and got to spend a lot of time picking his brain about production and why he did this movie. You guys have seen a few interviews with him already. And... I can't wait to see either one of those gentlemen again because they are, as a first time meeting them, they made quite the impression. And if you guys ever have an opportunity to sit down and pick their brains or even just chat with them, absolutely. I even got my signed whatchamacallit bar from Mel. I got three of them 
So needless to say, they will not be eaten. Um, so yeah, they go in the signature box uh, with all of the books that we've had autographed and things like that from people that we've met. Like to give a special shout out to John Matthews from Battlefront uh, Studios. He did a great job running that booth. Anything I needed, he gave, he was just quick to give it to me. It was great. Um, very, very big supporter of what I'm doing and I look forward to working with him more in the future. Had a great interview. Audio was a little off because it was kind of loud in the hall, but had a great interview with him about the new version four coming out and different things that Battlefront's working on. So hopefully we'll be doing a lot more with Battlefront in the future. And then we have the Toledo Game Room. Always enjoyed doing business with them. Anytime that we need something, um, specialty order, or we can't find it, you know, we don't want to do the work on eBay, things like that. We go to, straight to Toledo Game Room and they always do a great job of taking care of us. And they're, I don't know that there's anything that we've asked for that they haven't been able to find for us. So absolutely check them out, guys. I can't praise them enough. You'll see them at different, at the larger conventions throughout the country. Um, and he's the bits guy. If you need a, you know, anything for your hobby, he's gonna, and you can't find it anywhere else, he can find it. So it's a great place to stop and shop. Of course, I said Catalyst Games, and then we have um, Jake from Armor Class 10. He does some great t-shirts and I'm working on designing a logo so that he can actually put it in his booth. Um, we're we're gonna do some fun things with him. And so I really look forward to trying to help build him up, him build me up. Great guy to talk to. He's got a little hobby shop in uh, Boston area and it's just, he's a blast to, to just sit and chat with. Um, and he's a little, off from my normal circle of friends because most of my people are historical. That's just kind of the genre that we've stuck with. Um, obviously we play sci-fi and fantasy and things like that, but for the most part we're historical. So it's nice to have that different perspective in our circle of friends. So big shout out to Jake and the Armor Class 10. Then of course we have Sam from Games and Gears. I got a new set of the paint brushes while I was there and absolutely love them. I can't wait to show you what I'm working on with the uh, new Games and Gears paint brushes um, and the soaps and, and all of that stuff that he gave us. And then the little grass tufts um, for doing the, the basing. It's still, he put one on my name tag uh, while I was there at Adepticon. It's still on there and it wasn't even glued. It was just the sticky part of the tuft. So. I really look forward to working with that and our basing materials. And then of course, there's the Table War guys, Todd and Doug, they hooked me up. I've had my eye on the uh, Dungeons and Dragons checkered mat for about two years now. And I just keep forgetting and forgetting or they run out while I'm at a convention and, and things like that. Well, Todd actually set one aside for me this while at Adepticon and sent it home with us. So not only are we gonna be using it for Dungeons and Dragons, but while we're teaching my daughter the basis of a lot of the game systems that we play, we're gonna be using that as her measurements versus her having to worry about the tape measure at this point. Um, it's just, there's so many moving pieces on the game board that sometimes having the measurements on the board is great. So. And check out this game, this game board, guys. We got the we got the white checkered because we use the grass mats. But I think it's a four by four. And you can use the oil markers, the oil pens, or grease pens. I'm sorry. You can use grease pens on it and then just wipe it off. Great mat. I'm so excited to be using this with her and being able to mark where her people were and where they're gonna go, things like that. So many different uses for this mat. So if and all we use is table war mats in this house um, right now because they are waterproof. Um, they're made out of a great material that is uh, more of a mouse pad material. So it's very durable. It doesn't crease whenever we fold it. Um, 
to get it off the table real quick or switch out mats. Um, it just, if my daughter spills something on it, it just beads right up and we can blot it off and we don't have to worry about having to, you know, whether or not we can throw it in the washing machine or not. It's just so easy to clean and so durable that that's the product that we are using at the moment. Um, but I'm really excited to be throwing in the D and D mat, uh, to our other game systems. It's going to be so much fun to watch her work on these measurements by herself. Now, I've been talking with Andy Hobday quite a bit about his new games that are coming out. I don't have a lot of details on everything. I haven't gotten my hands on Mortal Gods yet, and I'm very I'm itching to. But they were finally able to settle on a company name. And thanks to Bill Hornthill, Bill Thornhill, thanks to Bill Thornhill, Andy Hobday has partnered with Footsore Miniatures and Gaming or in games, Footsore Miniatures and Games. That is the new company name for the Mortal Gods and, and those game systems. So be sure to get on Facebook and the websites and everything and check out what they have to offer. Give Andy Hobday a great shout out to what they are working on because it is some beautiful stuff. And I can't wait to get my hands on this Mortal Gods box set and really get to gaming with my daughters. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch my 13 year old who has been a little more resistant with the gaming. Um, she does a lot of the music piece, but with the gaming, it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch her finally get hooked because she loves anything Greek mythology. And so I'm really, I think Mortal Gods is gonna be the, the clencher for her. So, I talk about family gaming so much, and I saw a lot of families at Adopticon this year, and I talked to so many of the kids, and I loved it. It was a blast. I wanna see more families at these conventions. Bring your kids out, guys. It's so much fun, and it is a family-friendly environment. I was really nervous about the idea of taking my kids to Adopticon. And so I didn't do it this year. My husband told me it was fine, but it just, I hadn't been there. It was so big and so it was intimidating at the idea of, you know, as a mom or as a parent, taking my kids there with me. I can tell you, it's really not that bad. 5,000 plus attendees. You think this place is just absolutely swamped. It is but it's, it's controlled. It's a safe environment. And I didn't hear of anybody getting, you know, too crazy with the drinking or, you know, I didn't hear hardly any bad language while I was there. I mean, it was a true friend, family friendly event. And a lot of people had their kids there. And I think I posted some pictures and I'll be posting more, but bring your kids out guys. I want to see them game, and if I see your kids out there, I'm sure I will have some free stuff to give them to help encourage the hobby with them, and I just, oh, the kids were just amazing this year, and to watch the the little guys play, and I mean, they were brutal. They were just as brutal as the adults, so it was a lot of fun, and I look forward to making sure that you know, trying to work the school schedule so that my kids can go this year as well. And I mean, you guys will know they're going to be in their dresses. So the, the girl in the dress will be there, you know, as much as possible. So absolutely bring your families out, come out, have a good time with us. And it's going to be a blast next year. And I'm sure that all of the kids that were there this year will absolutely attest to that. Bring the families out. So while we were at Adepticon, I talked to Mel the Terrain Tutor about his partnership with Dave Taylor and his new book that he's putting out. He had it on Kickstarter, it's now closed, and I am thrilled to announce he was funded fully. And I don't mean like, oh, just the base funding that, that happens. That happened in seven hours from launching the Kickstarter. 
I'm talking about Mel is able to make his dream book. And he's, I've kind of chatted with him a little bit on the side while all this go, is going on. And now that the Kickstarter's over, it's hitting him. He's gonna be an author. And he's on cloud nine, guys. He can't wait to get all of the little nuggets of information that he has built up and he's put into his videos and, you know, put out to you guys. But now it's gonna be in a book format. And he is so excited to make this happen for you guys. So absolutely give some love to, to Mel the Terrain Tutor and Dave Taylor from Dave Taylor Miniatures for partnering up with him and show him some love with the book, guys. I mean, it's going to be great. I got my Kickstarter in. I think we ended up getting two hardbacks and the PDF file. There's a couple of expansions, that add-ons that you can do. One of them's a color palette. Um, one of them's a poster. I forget what the third one is. But I don't know if we're going to do those, but I do know that we at least got one hardback book and one PDF, but I think we got two hardback books so that my husband and I both have our own. And yes, Mel, next time I see you after the book comes out, I want signatures. So speaking of signatures on the books, we got Dave Taylor's from Dave Taylor Miniatures. We got his book while we were at Adepticon. And it talks about painting. And I did a interview with him at the end of Adepticon that it shows some of the pictures of, you know, the retouch ups and things like that, that he's done. Guys, this book is awesome. I've read through it. I've looked through it. My husband's read it. The techniques that he talks about in here are just, they will be used in my home for sure. Um, but, I mean, you can see here, it talks about just step-by-step step going through the process. So, and Dave Taylor signed our book for us. I was very excited about that. I know that it sounds odd, but these are, these are a big deal to, to me, especially because I know these individuals and I've worked with Dave Taylor and Dave Taylor miniatures for a very long time, a few years now. And Dave is just a great guy and I will do anything in my power to help support him in any of the adventures that he is on because he only works with things that he truly believes in. And if he can back them, he's got my, they've got my support. So check out Dave Taylor's book, Dave Taylor miniatures, check out Mel the Terrain Tutor's book. And, um, then also, of course, if you weren't a Kickstarter for the Miniatures Wargaming, the movie, you can find the film. We did a viewing at Adepticon. It's the first time it had been viewed outside of a film festival. It's on its film festival tour right now. So hopefully, I will keep you guys updated on what is happening, but hopefully we will be able to view it also at the Origins Film Festival and the Gen Con Festival here in the United States. So a lot of them are online, things like that. But I learned while at Adepticon that Gen Con and Origins both have their own film festival and they have entered it into the film festival running. So once we find out if they've been selected, I will let you guys know. But if you have an opportunity to see this movie, I can't encourage it enough. If you watched my interview with Joseph Pendleton last week as a follow-up from Adepticon, you saw that even I got emotional when talking about it because it just, everybody will find somebody to relate to in this film. And it really opens up your eyes as to the industry as a whole. And it was designed for somebody not in the hobby and to explain why we do what we do. And I think he did a great job of it. And I, you guys need to see it. Even if you're in the hobby, you need to see it. Share it with your family and friends that maybe just, what do you mean you still, you, you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or even more, and you still play with toy soldiers? Well, this is why. There's a love and a passion there, and it comes through in this film. And so you absolutely should stop and, and take a look at it if you have an opportunity. So, um... 
some of the other people that were there is you guys saw me really pushing the children's or the extra life group that was there, the Chicago Guild, and they did a great job. They ended up raising over $9,000 for the Children's uh, Hospital Foundation there in Chicago. And if you guys don't know, I'm a part of the Oklahoma City Extra Life group. There's some, there's, they're all over the country and they do such great work. And so the community at Adepticon was able to, between online donations, they're at the convention and, um, I believe Microsoft matched money. Uh, I'm not sure how much, but they matched the, the guild there. So they were able to raise over $9,000 for the hospital foundation there in Chicago to go towards children's uh, research. So that is a great thing that you guys did. And I'm so, so appreciative of all the support that you guys showed. And then I also, if you guys missed it, I don't know if it's still on their website or on their, their YouTube streaming channel, but they had the two guys, the two game designers from Front uh, Fantasy Flight that Alex and I believe his name is Brooke, that they got on there and they actually played a, a game of X-Wing and really broke it down and talked about the mechanisms of the game and kind of gave everybody a, their own demo of the game system, but they did it for the Extra Life group. And that was, Fantasy Flight has always been a great supporter of mine. And I really appreciated, cause I sprung this as a good idea on them and they were quick to jump on it and support this idea. And so they got on and did a live stream of, of playing this game. And it really, it was special to me. I'm sure it was special to a lot of you that watched but I know that it was very special to the Extra Life group there. And so I wanna give a big shout out to the Fantasy Flight crew that allowed that to happen. I know that you guys are dealing with some production stuff and it just, it was, it meant a lot to me. So thank you very much. Let's see, so what's coming up? Um, so Firelock Games ha was at Adepticon as well. Their booth was great, as always. If you ever have a chance to find a Firelock Games booth, check it out. We love Blood and Plunder. It was one of the few games that I would actually sit and play with my husband for a long time after we got it. Um, I just really enjoyed the mechanisms of the game. I enjoyed the time period um, of the, the pirates and the ships and things like that. I really enjoyed the land battles for uh, Battle or for Firelock with Blood and Plunder. So they were there, but they had a great display going and they were doing demos of their new game. And uh, so you need to, you need to check that out. Um, anything by Firelock is, is always a great product. They have their own version of um, a starter support system and I think it's called Firestarter. And so they're doing a lot of really fun stuff there at the company. And Mike Tunez is doing a great job running that company and coming up with some great products and he knows exactly what to support. So I look forward to seeing what's coming from them. But they are doing, I know that there's going to be at Historicon this year, Firelock Games is gonna be there. And there's also going to be a Blood and Plunder Sea Battle and Land Battle. On July 12th, there's gonna be a big land battle there at Historicon. And then on July 13th, there's gonna be a sea battle. So it doesn't matter if you are land or sea, you're gonna be able to go to Historicon and enjoy the gaming and see the, the crew from Firelock Games, really have a nice chat with them. Rufus does a great job of running the booth. His kids are involved in it and so I really, Big shout out to the Firelock Games guys because you guys did a great job at Adepticon and I know you're going to do a great job at, at Historicon and I can't wait to see you guys there. And then, oh, big news with Warlord Games. So I'm going to have to talk to John Russell some and get some, some details and I'm sure that he's going to be putting out some details in his Warlord Wednesday. But 
Warlord Games team had a few surprises over in the UK during the Salutes uh, convention. So they included a certain medical unit for their Bolt Action Korea figures. So if you were able to attend Salute, I am so jealous. Um, it was right after Adepticon and there was no way I was gonna be able to make that work uh, due to family obligations. But they had, they were displaying the Bolt Action Korea system and some of the new figures there especially the U.S. guys, you're going to see some, you would have seen some figures in that display that are going to remind you of an old TV show here in the U.S. and uh, you'll recognize some of those people. So I'm really excited about these figures and being able to get our hands on them. You guys know that I have been heavily anticipating the uh, launch of this book for many reasons and I am so glad that it is, it's finally coming to uh, a close and yet another opening. Um, this is a great adventure that I'm gonna be able to go on with my husband and really look forward to, to doing that. So be looking at the Warlord Games website and Facebook pages and different things and check out the Bolt Action Korea figures because they're pretty awesome. I'm really excited about them. I, I hadn't even seen them. So my husband was holding out on me. Apparently he had seen them since he'd been working on the book. I hadn't even gotten to see them until they debuted them at Salute. So I was really excited to see this. But they also debuted, um, the they announced the Age of Sales game called Black Seas. When I get more, this is what I'm gonna have to get more details from John Russell about because they weren't like leaking this at all. And so it's a brand new game system that they're working on um, with the sea battles and things like that. So. I'm going to have to pick John Russell's brain, pick the studio's brain, talk about, you know, the gist of the game. Is it black powder? Um, is it sea battles for black powder, black powder era or what it, what's the concept here? So it kind of gives me the impression that it's black powder, but I'm just, I'm very excited to get my hands on this because again, we, we love blood and plunder. And so I can't imagine that I won't enjoy black sea, black sales at all or black seas. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm going to, I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm having to look more at my, my notes now. Um, cause it's more details. Let's see. We have battlefront and their late war version four released by, uh, so that's going to be releasing this summer, uh, for D-Day. I'm hoping to be getting a copy of that here soon to start previewing that game system and learning a little bit more about that. Hold on. I dropped my notes. There we go. <laughs> Guys, it is what it is. I mean, that's the joy of me, right? We all just need a little bit more coffee. So, I am working um, to work, I'm trying to work with Battlefront about the late war version and uh, version four and the launch of that with D-Day. There's so much going on with that, that it's just, I, I don't have enough details to really share that with you guys other than, um, you know, we're gonna be working with the younger gamers um, personally because I have that passion and I think that it's gonna go a long ways with the younger crowds. And so all of you that currently play anything uh, Battlefront, bring your grandkids to the conventions, let them come hang out with my husband and I. Um, he's wanting to start a new campaign with the different conventions called Big Battles for Little Hands, um, targeting ages like 12 and under to come and play the game systems and just start that hobby with them. So, you know, plant those seeds and Battlefront's game systems will be among those lists that he plays. So I'm really looking forward to that and working with the younger gamers and bringing them into the more historical, starting them out in historical and um, 
helping expand their minds because so much can be done with the historical community and these young gamers. So let's see. Um, oh, Steve put in here. <laughs> of course, he has stacks of tanks and figures and is already working on this. So like I said, he's planning on doing the big big battles for little hands and he is, he is incredibly pumped about this. So we will be trying to do more with the conventions to come about getting those little gamers in there. And I look forward to having the support of the studio uh, while doing this. So absolutely there. And then a um, little bit on the No Dice, No Glory stuff. So as you know, I work very closely with the No Dice, No Glory team. And last week on, pod, on the podcast, I think it was episode 37, they talked about Team Yankees Oil Wars. What's really cool about this, it was, it's a great addition to the, the Team Yankee storyline because it brings in more of the, you know, the what if factor. And the basis of the Oil Wars is what if the European War had extended into the Middle East and the fight for oil and other objectives became mixed into a global fight for war or for power. So it's a backstory to World War III. It's kind of, you gotta kind of use your imagination with it. And I like that. Um, it's not so so cut and dry and, but it is, it's very, his, you know, if it's very if correct in the aspect of, um, military and how it would function and things like that but you do kind of get to use your imagination or they've used their imaginations with what if what if world war three broke out and you know this is the big what if backstory to it and so it it's a neat neat twist and so the podcast talks about you know the the oil wars and, and things like that so it's a lot of it's going to be a lot of fun to, to play and I can't wait to get my hands on it um, as well. I'm not, I've never actually played Team Yankee itself. I've witnessed a lot and trying to learn the mechanisms, but I've never been able to throw the dice. So I look forward to making that happen soon. Um, I've got some friends here in Oklahoma City that I'm going to coordinate, uh, get together with. So, and then um, Mitch Reed has a new article out about the Great War. So it's having a great time playing the Great War. That's a new Battlefront game um, rule set that just came out. And uh, it's a review on Battlefront's new Great War book. He was one of the assistant writers for the new book. So big shout out to Mitch Reed for, you know, his book coming out uh, and all of that. And yes, we already have our copy. Here it is. And so, it um it's got some great stuff in it i mean the the images in it the print it's a good quality book and it's nice and thick um uh, it actually has let's see 233 pages is what it has there so i dropped my paper again ha. i need a lot more coffee today so um, you know, if you haven't had an opportunity to check out the Great War book, stop by your local hobby shop, check it out, go to a local convention where Battlefront's going to be, get your copy because it's a lot of fun to play from what I'm hearing. And, um, the No Dice, No Glory team has obviously done a lot of play testing with it. So absolutely check them out. Check out the, the new rule set because I'm hearing a lot of really good things about it. So, um, and then, so on the home front, let's talk about the family and their gaming a little bit because it's been an interesting two weeks since Adepticon. We had, um, from the moment we dropped Joe off at the airport, it's been nonstop. I didn't even make it out of Chicago before schools were calling me. So I went straight from being the lady in the dress to Ma, and there was no transition period whatsoever. So I had 
you know, we wrapped up the convention, went and dropped Joe off at the, the airport, heading home, got a, cool, got a call from the school talking about the little one. And then we jumped right into uh, the very, the day I got home. We unloaded the car, changed into uh, some comfy clothes and bolted off to the track meet for the big one. So we went track meet, uh, there was a wedding, and I mean, just uh, cleaning up from spring storms, you name it, it had to happen. It was just that time of year. So it's been non-stop. We've had some friends that have had some family issues that, um, you know, we've been trying to help support through that. And they've been in our, our thoughts and prayers and heavy on our minds. You know who you are and just know that you've been on our mind. And we are here for you if you, for anything you may need. And, but then we also, you know, we've had some, you know, moments here and there that we've been able to kind of stop and relax. And of course that has all been dedicated to the hobby and gaming because that's how we relax. So we, um, we've been playing some new games from Catalyst that we got our hands on. Of course, Battletech, same rules from 35 years ago, but it's just repackaged and my 10 year old is absolutely in love. You guys saw a video of her opening up the Wrath of the Dragons. We are still working on playing that. Um, she's really enjoying it. And once we get more of the rules down, we will be doing a video demo of that game system. It's still set up on my dining room table for two weeks now. like. That's her game system at the moment. And so on her little end of the table, that's what's there. But she's having a blast with it. And um, we are really trying to learn those rules so that we can give a proper demo to you guys. And she's so excited to join mommy in doing that. Um, but we have had a blast. We've been so busy with soccer, track, swim team, weddings, you name it. It's been crazy, but we did stop for a moment and take our daughters to the medieval fair in Norman, Oklahoma. And so on top of conventions now, I will be attending any live reenactments possible, apparently, which I'm really okay with. Uh, but she wore, she actually wore a dragon onesie and was so excited because she was in her element and there was just, there was no stopping her. She had a blast. And so we will be, we look, we will be looking for other events like that in our area. And as we travel to the different conventions. So I think I have a future cosplayer on my hands guys. And so I'm going to need all the help I can get learning how to make those costumes. Um, because right now I'm using a Halloween costume onesie for her dragon costume. And it's working for now. But she doesn't do anything halfway. So, um, you guys saw the pictures of me with the Sister of Battles from Adepticon. It's not going to be too much longer before I'm there. And I'm going to need your all's help to um, figure out how to make that happen for my little girl. So, uh, some of the events that are coming up. As we move through, move into summer, we have Little Wars in Lombard, Illinois, from the 26th of April to the 28th in Weston Yorktown Center. Um, that's where Adepticon used to be held. So go by and check them out. If you are curious about historical gaming or you're in the area and you're like, mm, I don't know, go by and check them out because it's a great group of people at the at the Little Wars. I mean, any of the historical gaming society, um, it's the historical miniature, uh, miniature gaming society. I think is what it is. Uh, the H HMGS is what it's called. Um, but they're a great group of guys and they're really doing a lot of things to help change the historical hobby as a whole and the way that they run their conventions and things like that. I'm really looking forward to, to working with them a little bit more. Um, I'm not really sure how and what capacity, but 
just they they're turning out to be a great group of guys so absolutely want to to support them I don't know if I'm gonna make Little Wars I'm still trying to figure out the logistics of it because I just came from Chicago and with the kids and there's crazy schedules and things like that so I will let you guys know about Little Wars but if you're in the area go check them out and I mean it's the 26th through the 28th it's gonna be a great convention and there's not a ton of people there there's a lot it's a big convention but it's not as big as adepticon or anything like that so it's a nice quiet environment for those of you that don't necessarily want to go deal with the big crowds things like that it's a great place for you guys to go and hang out and play the historical games and then um historicon is july 10th through the 14th so start making your plans now for that um I mean, registration, all of that's going to be, if it's not open now, it will be here soon. And um, I'm going to do my best. I have a military school that I will be at during Historicon. I'm going to do my best to make it out there because it's not too far of a drive. And um, we will, I will see, my husband will definitely be at Historicon this year. So make your plans to go to Historicon. It's gonna be great this year they've got some great speakers lined up guests you know great guest um guest speakers you, you name it they've got a great crew this year and um they're gonna have their members meeting and and things like that so if you're part of the hmgs society then if you're a member of that then you need to stop in there and have your your board meeting and, and things like that because that's where the meat and potatoes of of the HMGS is. If you don't participate on that, then you know, eventually that hobby's gonna that society's gonna go away and we don't want to see that happen. I I like I love what the HMGS is doing and I'm excited to be participating in these events in the future. So uh, but speaking of registration and travel and events coming up, don't forget about Nova Open. Their registration is open. They are really pushing out, uh, cranking out their, their lineups for who's going to be doing seminars right now. July 1st, the charity raffle starts online. There's going to be 40 items on the charity raffle um, international raffle page. So, I mean, that's a lot. And this crew that is is raffling this off and that's painting it, oh my gosh, you've got Chapter of Hope. You've got um, so many different organizations, Stiff Neck Studios um, that are working on some stuff, I believe. You've got a Titan that's being raffled off that I know of, some X-Wing stuff um, from, oh... Um, so many different artists. I can't even begin to name them all off right now. There's just, they went, they have 110 artists working on these raffles. And so it's just insane. This, this raffle has grown so much and they're going to, you guys are going to do so much great stuff with the Doctors Without Borders, Fisher House Foundation and Breast Cancer Research. And I'm so excited to say that I'm a proud part of the Nova family and that I will be there this year and I actually was able to rearrange military schedules to accommodate being at Nova. So if you are questioning whether or not you want to come to Nova or if you are questioning whether or not you're going to buy raffle tickets, don't question anymore. Come out, see me. Let's have a good time. We will hang out in the charity lounge upstairs on the rooftop with a beautiful view of the DC area. And we will help raise some money for charity because this is where my passion is. The charity and growing the, the community. And that is why I do what I do. And so come out, hang out with me. We will, you know, we will throw some dice up in the, in the lounge area. People are gaming nonstop there as well. And it is just so much fun. A lot of this, a lot of vendors are going to be there too. I know that um, it just 
I, I will get a list of the vendors as we get closer, but the Brandt family and all of their supporters have done a great job with this event. And it's the close of the tournament season here in the U.S. And it is just, it's, it's there. Bring your families, bring your kids, because it is a family-friendly environment as well. I hope to be bringing my, the, the girls in the dress with me this year to help with volunteering and things like that, even if it's just working the registration. So don't forget about the charity raffles kicking off July 1st and going until September 1st at noon Eastern. So the, the charity raffles kick off July 1st. I don't know what time, but July 1st, and then they close September 1st at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Then, um, so with that, thank you all for joining me. This has actually been one of the longer shows that I've done live, but there was just so much information to get out to you guys that I just, I needed all of it. I needed your time. So thank you so much for joining me. And I'd like to close with just one more note. I just wanna say for everybody out there, the events of this week with the Notre Dame Chapel or Cathedral is just so heartbreaking. So much of our hobby circles around the historical monuments and the, you know, where so many history, his, so much history was made that it is just heartbreaking to see such a icon be destroyed and to know how much that chapel had or cathedral had gone through um, in its 800 years and then to be brought down by a fire. It's, it is truly heartbreaking and my heart, my thoughts and my prayers are with those of you in Paris and those of you that have been there and admired at its beauty and the historians that are mourning its loss, the religious individuals that are mourning their lo its loss and just, I mourn the historical value on top of so much else. And I can only imagine what the rest of you historians are, are dealing with because that is, that's part of our hobby. It's, you know, how many times have we modeled something after a cathedral on our boards or talked about, you know, churches or historical places that were destroyed during wars or survived the different wars that we uh, fashion our games after. And this is just, There are, are really no words to describe how so many people are feeling today um, and this week. And so with that being said, my heart, my thoughts, and my prayers go out to all of you across the world that have suffered a tremendous loss, no matter what its capacity. And I look forward to rebuilding watching the rebuilding of this cathedral and just so hopefully the you know perhaps the nature of this this week will help us gain strength and perspective and rebuild in peace and just with that godspeed and thank you for joining me with coffee and dice we will see you guys next week.